from Austin Town, Ohio. It is Division II regional semifinal action between the Buckeye Local Panthers and the Blue Streaks of Uniontown Lake. Hello again, everybody. I'm George Kellis along with Ty Fleming. I have my Steeler jacket on tonight. Ty has his Browns jacket on, but we have come here with one common thing in mind, and that is to root home the Buckeye Local Panthers. Oh, definitely, George. This is a big, big game for the Panthers, and that Coach Publish has been here before, and the kids have uh, had some good games. They've played some tough teams in the playoffs before and have gone down to defeat. What they need to do tonight, especially early on, is have good success to get a mental attitude that they can do well in the playoffs, plus against this Uniontown Lake team, as you said, you know, they've been here before. And what they got to do is have success early and try to loosen that line up because, believe it, their coach is going to crowd that line with a five- and six-man line and try to take Chet Publish out of the ball game. So a lot of pressure is going to be on Elliot Hosenfield to loosen them up through the air. Yeah, I think this is a crossroads game and what has been a crossroads season for Buckeye. Uh, they opened the season with a big, big win over Upper St. Clair, the Pittsburgh area, proving to themselves and a lot of other people that they could play with the elite programs. Now the big hurdle, getting past the first round of the playoffs. If you don't do it a third time, and this is their third try, it could become a mental thing. It could be, but you know, like I say, a lot of times the third time's a charm. Coach Pope knows what has to be done. His staff knows what has to be done. They've prepared all week. They've watched the films. They've gone back over the years and looked at the tendencies that Lake has thrown against people. So they, I think that we're going to be ready tonight and come out and finally break that jinx for Buckeye. Go Panthers. Back with the opening kickoff right after these messages. For 15 years, the health plan has provided high-quality, cost-effective medical benefits to over 82,000 members in West Virginia and Ohio. Comprehensive medical benefits with little or no co-payments, no deductibles, no co-insurance, and virtually no claim forms. This nonprofit organization has built a foundation based on financial strength, stability, and reliability. The health plan of the Upper Ohio Valley. With you yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It's comforting to know it's not just city folks who can get legal protection if they've been hurt in an accident. Gold, Corey, and Turek have helped people throughout Ohio, including Clarenton, Caddis, Woodsfield, Grayland, and will visit you and talk to you for free if you need help. We may not have an office in your hometown, but we're really not that far away. Because if you have a phone, you have a lawyer. The right attorney can make a difference. Call Gold, Corey, and Turek at 845-9750. The new co-op store, serving the Ohio Valley for 86 years, would like to wish the Buckeye Local Panthers the best of luck in the playoffs. Steel Valley Bank, the Ohio Valley's fastest growing bank, wishes the Buckeye Local Panthers much success in the playoffs. Let Creative Carpets of Wintersville help you decorate your home for the holidays and get the personal attention that you need to create that special room of your dreams. You've seen us on the field and anywhere else competitive athletics are played. When you think of sports medicine, one name stands alone, Ohio Valley Hospital. What you may not have seen is the dedication and commitment to the physical rehabilitation of athletes. The addition of the Industrial Athletic Performance Center at OVH has solidified our leadership in sports medicine for the Ohio Valley. Sports medicine physicians, physical therapists, and certified athletic trainers all combine their efforts in the total rehabilitation of each athlete. As long as competitive sports are played, OVH will lead the way. I've covered a lot of sporting events in my career, but I can honestly tell you there is nothing quite like the Ohio High School football playoffs. And we are about to kick them off here in 1994 on a chilly, crisp evening at Fitch High School in Austintown. The Buckeye Panthers in the navy blue uniforms will receive the opening kickoff in Uniontown Lake kicking away. And here we go. It'll come to one of the up backs. And it is picked up by Mike Roush. Mike Roush. Roush on the return back to about the 33-yard line. Into a pile of bodies. And Buckeye Local will have the first possession of the game. It was obvious right there with Povelich, the deep back, that they were not about to kick the ball in his direction. No, no way they want the ball in Chet's hand early on. But uh, coming out of there with awful good field position with that type of kick. So I don't think Coach Povelich will be too upset all night long. They give the ball to him on the 35-yard line. 
All right, here we go. Panthers break out of the huddle, set up in the I formation. Roush the fullback and Poblish the tailback and flags before we can ever get underway here. And we're off Kellis, Ty Fleming, and Bill Edgar assisting us here this evening, and this is not good. No, coming out there early on, we had a little motion on the line there. But what we saw early on there on that for them the pre-snap that his legs coming out there in that 6-2, George, and they're really gonna crowd that line of scrimmage and try to take the ground game of Buckeye away early on. So we may see the ball up in the air a little bit more than what Buckeye folks are used to. Of course, last week was a little different. They break the eye this time, give it to Poblish. Poblish running to the near side and works his way back to about the original line of scrimmage, a gain of five. Look for Buckeye, do a lot of traffic tonight when they're in that six-man line in there. And at times they'll come out of that six, they'll break into a five with an off offset nose. We take a look at here on the instant replay, we see Chet just falling his blockers up there, as you said, brings it back to the original line of scrimmage, second and ten. And if not for the penalty, it would be second and five. Little razzle dazzle. This is Danny McCain. And McCain slashing up across the 40 up to about the 42, 43 yard line. Danny Knight. McCain, a good carry on a second down, makes it third and two. Nice counter action here. You'll see Danny come from the wing there on a low inside reverse from Chet. Again, there's that trapping game that we're going to see Buckeye into a lot tonight, folks. Big down here, George. Third and two, short two. Power eye formation for the Panthers. And they give it to McCain, who struggles forward, but I think short of the first down, we'll see where they mark it. It's very close. He bounced a bit on the turf, and we're, we will check the forward progress. Looks well, like they're giving him a pretty good spot here. I, I, I disagree with you, George. I thought he kind of gave him a bad spot. That guy was the old uh, watch TV. That's the right foot, left foot spot. And that was the right foot spot there. The guy used his back foot, not his left foot. It was the forward uh, progress. And he's going to be a little bit short from where the yard marker was to start to down with. Now the Panthers have to caution against little butterflies here. They're going to be short by that much. And one of the assistant coaches told us during the pregame that the club was noticeably nervous, or at least a lot of the players were. Here we go, Pope's going. Look at this. That last Fourth time. down and inches. Buckeye local from its own 44-yard line, and these guys did not show up here tonight to be messing around. I love this. First down, down Buckeye. Roush, the fullback, and I can tell you this, Ron Poblish has enormous confidence in that young man. He ran for over 500 yards on the year. They've got a pretty good threesome in that backfield. Poblish with 1,145 yards leading the way at tailback, but you've got Roush and McCain who accounted for 1,000 yards between them, so that's a pretty good trio. Yes, it is. Right here we saw a good offensive surge here. Take the ball for the first down and the lead back. McCain going up through. Poblish over the 50 down to the 45 of Uniontown Lake. And be bringing up second and short. I like the non-conservative approach that they took right there. They could have punted, and, and of course they've got a lot of confidence in the Panther defense, but Ron Poblish going for it on fourth and inches. He believes in his football team, and I believe that the Panthers have a little momentum and a little confidence going now. First down, or make it second down and one at the 45. No gain here as Poblish is corralled for maybe a loss of a half a yard. Good penetration there by the Lake front line here got in there is that second man through again faking the full back up the middle giving the chat off the outside there but the offensive line kind of caved in there and they had good penetration we'll take a look at it here third down a short one upcoming power eye right once again and this time it's another first down Danny McCain and he'll get to the 43 of Union Town Lake. Lake nicknamed the Blue Streaks. Right now, they are trying to control that steady grinding ball control of the Buckeye Local Panthers. Notice the, the, a lot of counter action being right there, George, by Buckeye right off the bat, sending backs in different directions. The ball carrier coming back against the grain on that first man. Here's a different look for Lake. They're coming out there in their 50 offset. Not much running room. A little different look that time from the Panthers with a single set and a wing right. And uh, 
right. short yardage. Yes, with the with the different, with the even and odd uh, man front that the uh, offensive line for Buckhouse is going to be seeing. Right? That offensive line is really going to have to come up with their heads up to pick up their blocking schemes. Roush, a gain of two, ran into some heavy traffic. Second down, eight Panthers at the 42. Elliott Hosey's open will throw. And good defensive play. Hoglish was the intended receiver. And the ball broken up on the far side in front of the Buckeye local bench area. Knocked down by 21, Chris Espega. Bringing up now down third and long for Buckeye. But what they did there, again, they're just going to try to loosen that uh, leg defense up. But we're down in here now. Again, if Coach can get a good game right now, we're going to look for him to go for it again on fourth, George. They're not wasting any time either. They're just running up to the line of scrimmage and running plays. Hosenfeld is in trouble, and he is dumped at the 41-yard line. Buckeye try to come out there in a two-man pattern and bring Chet Polish out of the backfield again, but there was no way he was going to do that. The, the coverage was too good. You'll see Elliott here trying to look. He got his tight end going down the center of the field, and he had to back out of the backfield in the right flat. There was no one to take it to, so he brought it down smartly. Going to try to pin him deep. And the punt is short. It was indeed a sack, and we'll call that a sack for a sack. So, Coger, food and drug, sends $50 for each sack. Lake nothing, Buckeye local nothing. There's a break in the action. We'll be right back. A short 23-yard punt by Rick Matthews of the Buckeye Panthers and Lake with possession of the football. First and 10 at its own 18-yard line. A quick pitch to the tailback and a brilliant defensive effort right there by Danny McCain. Danny shot in there from his outside linebacker spot right there. There's that pitch sweep. The folks are going to see a lot of night. See the bottom of the screen, number 44. As he's getting blocked, he reaches his hand in there and grabs the ankle of the lake ball carrier to bring him down. Todd Sonhalter was the ball carrier on the play, and their regular stellar tailback is out for the duration of the season. Broken ankle in last week's uh, regular season finale against Ravenna, and we will not see him. We will see two juniors instead, and here's one of them. Look pretty good on that play. That's Sonhalter, who carries a head up across the 20 and to the 25, make it the 26-yard line. Sonhalter, a 5'11", 173-pound junior. It'll be third down about a yard, and it's a good thing that the Panthers uh, had him thrown for a loss on first down. Ben Bailey makes the tackle in the secondary. Here's a big third and two. Buckeye trying to maintain the good field position here in the first quarter. From the I formation, the blue streaks of Uniontown Lake. This is a first down to the 31-yard line. Sonhalter gets the call again. Good crisp blocking, and we were told about their fullback, who was an outstanding lead blocker, and he has certainly showed us something here in the early going, Ty Fleming, a guy by the name of Jeff Willie, number 34. Keep an eye on him. He's a good blocking fullback. Yes, he is. He's the perfect size in there for a fullback that you would want to lead the block up in there for you there. He's 5'11", 195, and the Buckeye coach has told us for the game, he loves to make the contact in there, and he keeps his feet under him and just drives people out of the way. Twin receivers to the near side. The pitch coming to the tailback again. And this will be Sonhalter. That's the play we saw on the first down, which they lost the yard on. But this time they got the outside linebacker there for Buckeye. Kicked to the outside. And he had the alleyway to cut up there and pick up four yards, five yards. And that first down play, we'll take a look at it right there as he makes the cut up field. And the pursuit from the inside has to bring him down. Second and six now, George, from the 35. So far, nothing fancy from Uniontown Lake. We saw the Panthers throw a couple of twists in there on their first offensive possession. Still no score. The give this time to the fullback, and he runs into Ball's opposition. Loose. Ball loose. Lake got it. Picked up yardage. Had him stop for a no gainer, and the ball fell forward now, and he picked up a good three yards on the fumble. Here's Willie, the up back. The fullback we're telling you about, and he keeps fighting, maybe fighting too much because there's a loose football. Oh, wow. Try to lean, try to put that ball out there, try to pick up the extra yardage on the lean, and in so doing, he got hit from the gut there, and the ball came pop loose, and Son good break for him. Covered it, the other setback. This time they go with a single back, third down and three. 
The quarterback, John Kurtz, a veteran who took him to the state finals a year ago. The Kurtz Archer. is in trouble and down he goes. Looks like big number 66 in there for Buckeye. Clint Hepburn. Clint Hepburn. And let me tell you a little something about the Panther sack attack. There, you're going to see some sacks in this game, ladies and gentlemen. That's our second sack for a sack this evening. And these guys are sack specialists. Mike Will, Jim Runovich, Clint Hepburn, Mike Roush up front. And what a core of linebackers. Danny McCain, Joe Kaminsky, Scott Treckle, and John Ray tie with Dave Cornish, Chet Poglish, and Ben Bailey in the secondary. All right, here is Load the line drive. field. And uh, they're going to let it roll dead on the far side of the field. Buckeye will have decent field position at its own 27-yard line. No score here in the first quarter. Period, still no score. Buckeye with its first offensive possession on a nice drive, which stalled now with a second chance. And the fake to Poblish. Hosenfeld is under pressure. Throws, incomplete, almost intercepted. The ball was overthrown, intended for Joe Kaminsky, who is a dandy target at 6-6. The tight end, Joe Kaminsky. 230-pound senior. Hosenfeld had a big, big game against Wheeling Park last week. Patriots uh, bottled things up along the line of scrimmage, forcing Hosenfeld to throw the ball downfield, and he did it effectively, throwing for 305 yards. And it looks like Lake wants him to put it up a few times here tonight. Poblish, some inside yardage, but not a whole lot. It'll be third down and long. As they're, they're inside, people are really well schooled in there. Big number 51 made about three or four tackles now in for him. They're swan, and he is just staying at home and playing that line of scrimmage. If folks get a chance to watch him tonight, he does not make penetration. The ball goes away from him. He really scoots down the line of scrimmage, and uh, his team is well coached and very physical. Lake always a very strong, physical football team. There's Hosen the and open. Throws incomplete intended for Kaminsky. And the Panthers are three and out, they'll have to punt. Nice pattern run there by Buckeye, nice flood pattern there off the boot action away from the uh, back run of the ball. We'll take a look at it here. He's gonna tuck that ball right down in the middle of the three receivers to Joe Kaminsky and ball just slightly overthrown. Now they got good time. Just incomplete, head yardage for the first down. All right, Matthews, short kicked the short one, shanks this one as well. And uh, the Panthers right now doing a nice job in most phases of the game, except with their punt team at the moment. And the ball goes out of bounds in Panther territory at the 48-yard line. That's a big break from where they were at before, before they start down on the 18. Now they are here out here in the 48-yard line going in on Buckeyes defense. So this is a big turnabout in field position, George. 2.50 to play in the first quarter and Lake with its first opportunity in Buckeye territory. Twins right out of the I formation. They give it to the tailback and he will get down to the 45 yard line. Again, it is Sonhalter. They will alternate two tailbacks, we are told. Eric Howard, another junior, that's Howard right there. So that is his first carry of the game, Eric Howard, and uh, Hepburn in on the tackle again for Buckeye. Second down and seven after a gain of three to the Panther 45-yard line. They realize, George, this is the quarterback, as you said, took him to the state semifinals last year. Draw play, and would have no Diagnosed part of it. rather nicely. Howard, the ball carrier, and Jim Runovich was right there to make the stop. This is very, very important for Buckeye Local to hang in there in the early fractions of this game. If for no other reason, that Lake has a lot of guys who play two-way football. They do not have the kind of depth that they have had in previous years. And, and Buckeye would appear to be a, a team blessed with uh, more two-way players and the superior depth here tonight. The quarterback throws it, picked off. And the return coming to the far side, John Ray tie. And the Panthers are back in business. 
business. They'll have the football first and 10 from their own 44-yard line. Great coverage here by the secondary. They played zone the whole way, and I tell you, they stayed right in their areas, and John Kurtz tried to force his ball in where there was nothing to throw the ball to, I tell you. The one thing about this Panther club is they can damage your offense in so many ways. They shut Weirton out. They held explosive Martins Ferry to 13. Ferry averaged 51 the rest of the way after that. And they beat Upper St. Clair 14 to 7. So this club can stop good offensive football teams. And on a first down play, the Panthers do not get much as Uniontown Lake flexes its defensive muscle. Yes, big number 66, Steve Briggs in there for Lake. 6'2", 227 pounds, senior. Better along that offensive or defensive line for Lake made some good penetration and it looked like there's going to be a hole there for Chet, but he came from the inside and cut it down. Second and seven. Split second. that count Oblish. Oh boy. And I'll tell you what, this is a good job right here to get some yardage because McCain almost got mugged in the backfield. Man, that little counter inside reverse that we saw him run there on the earlier series. We'll take a look at here. You'll see the penetration. I believe it's number 66 coming through there. Briggs right there. And he's a stud. I've been told that Briggs, you can check his physical dimensions in the program right there, Ty. He is going to be tough to run around. Hosenfeld dumps it short, intended again for Kaminsky, and incomplete. So it's quickly three and out again, unless, of course, the Panthers would try something here. Right there, he, all he did, he just failed to keep his eyes on his ball. Joe come off his uh, block to the outside there and spun around to the inside for the quick dump pass, and the ball was thrown to money, but Joe's eyes came up looking defender. We need a better punt. Flag there in the go. air. There's a better punt, but we'll see what the call is. A fair catch at the 20-yard line, and Uniontown Lake will set up shop. Only two seconds showing in the first quarter. Ty, we saw a game between Martins Ferry and Belair last week in which 50-some points were scored in the first half. I don't think we're going to have that type of effort here by the offenses tonight. No, no. We see it there a motion penalty against Buckeye. And with Lake having the ball there on a 20-yard line and the punting game of Buckeye, I think we're going to see this penalty accepted by Lake and see if they can get better field position out of this. You betcha. Yep. They're going to force the Panthers to kick it away once again. One thing uh, that, that certainly both teams are going to have to adapt to is that this is the chilliest evening uh, it, either team has had to play in what has been a very warm fall. Oh, yes, you know, it's not really cold, cold, George. It's just that it came up on us so quickly our, our blood is still thin and we're used to, like, like last Friday night, you know, no one had short a coat sleeves. on. Short Yeah, short sleeves. 70 degrees at Martins Ferry. It's uh, some... 30 degrees cooler than that here this evening in Austin Town. Feels and, like 60 uh, degrees cooler. <laughs> and kicking the football, quite frankly, can be like kicking a rock instead of uh, a nice cushiony pigskin. All right. Matthews will try again. Gets the kick away. It's a good one. Comes down at the 20. They will get better field Oh, no, he got a wall. He got a wall and a lot of room to the near side. Over the 50, the 45. And it's Mike Patching. Nice job there by Lake. He was trying to get to the left sideline for his real wall. And all of a sudden, there was nothing there. He broke it back to the right sideline. His blockers picked it up and threw some nice crack backs there on Buckeye. Took the ball clear down, as you said, to the 38-yard line. And that ends the first quarter, George. In Ohio Division 5 high school football playoff action. Catch all the play-by-play -play action Saturday night at 11.30 following News 9 tonight on the WTOV9 High School Football Game of the Week. We have played one quarter of football and a couple of penalties have hurt the Panthers here. Uh, they would have had Uniontown Lake pinned back at its own 20-yard line, but instead, uh, the re-kick, and Lake makes the great return all the way to Buckeyes 38. 42-yard pickup. That's exactly right. So a five-yard penalty uh, turns into a 42-yard disaster right there, and Lake has the football in great shape at the Buckeye 38-yard line. And the way both defenses out there are, are really controlling the, each other's offense, and field position is going to play a very big role in the outcome of this ball game tonight. Buckeye defense right now has got to uh, realize they're in four down territory and they're going to have to make some stop early on here to keep them into second and 
third down and long yardage. They don't want to give him any big yardage on his first down call. Two fifth-year coaches involved in this game. Jeff Durbin and Ronnie Polish and Lake. And if you're tuning in late in the white jerseys here and the Buckeye in all blue, they'll turn around now and Lake will be on the attack right to left. A win, not a factor at all here, by the way. Oh, no, no. Had a chance a couple years ago there to uh, coach against uh, Coach Durbin at the uh, the Mass at the North South All-Star game, uh, George. And believe me, uh, he is strictly all business at that game. You know, we try to have a little fun up there. And uh, Jeff uh, was a, a straight-laced guy who did not like to uh, have many uh, well good times and uh, play around with each other. If you'll pardon the comment, I spoke with him on the phone today and was not very pleased with his disposition. Well, i got to admit that. Uh, he, he, his, uh, his football uh, mindset is uh, strictly uh, one of the, the old school uh, that uh, what we're doing here. We're having trouble getting the chain set up. But, uh, you know, Jeff, Jeff is just a strictly a, a football man, uh, 24 hours a day, 365 days out of the year. Well, maybe he needs to get a life. Second yeah. quarter, and uh, we're getting ready to play some ball here. No score. And uh, Buckeye defending at its own 38-yard line. And Lake in the eye formation, give it to the tailback. And good defensive penetration once again. Sonhalter is back in there. And it's Mike Roush cutting through and cutting down the ball carrier. No gain. Yes, he did. He took on the blocker and took on the ball carrier nice and low and just upset him there for no gain. But the uh, you know one thing, George, I don't know if we've really been mentioning that is the success of this uh, Lake Ball Club. You know, the state uh, runners up 91, 93, semi finals 91, 92, 93, 94. Make it to the final four in Ohio four times Good in the pressure. last five years. Get after this guy. Oh, no. Oh, wow. And that should have been a loss of about six or seven. Instead, Mike Roush finally flags down John Kurtz after a nice gain to the 30 yard line. Nice play by Kurtz because he brought that ball down with blue shirts all over him. We'll take a look at it right here. Good penetration. Comes off the block right there. He just ducks underneath the ball, uh, underneath the tackler. And now with the defenders dropping back in their curl zones and deep flat zones, he gets room to run. Picks up eight yards. Looking now at third and three. Coach Publish won't be happy when he looks at the films and sees the missed tackles there. Third down and three. The handoff to the tailback. I think he's got the first down inside the 26-yard line. Yes, he does. Son Halter. Todd Son Halter. Bad, bad break for Buckeye on that on that call there on second down. Not getting back there, George, but you know, it's just a case of a good athlete making the play for Lake. First and ten for the first week. First and 10 ball at the 27 of Buckeye Local. George Kellis and Ty Fleming from Austin Town. Ten and a half minutes to go in the first half of a scoreless football game. Out of the I formation, here's the pitch, and the Panthers over pursue just a little bit. Sonhalter runs ahead for a gain of about four or five down to the 21-yard line. We've seen already one of their favorite plays. They're going to be running all night long. There's this pitch sweep right here. You'll see that they're going to be blocking down with their tackle and tight end, putting the onside guard up and leading the fullback up through there. And he's just going to read the alleyway, whether it be inside or outside the defensive end. And the Panthers had two of their interior linemen overrun the play completely. Second down and five. Uh-oh. Well, the eye back started to move. Unbalanced line. They're going to the wide side There's of the it. pitch to the right side. This is big trouble here. Sonhalter touchdown. Todd Sonhalter, 22 yards. What we had there, George, was an unbalanced line. They brought their tight end over to that side and also had their flanker out there. They had the two guys on the left side of the center giving them the extra blocker out there. And they took advantage of it on their pitch sweep again and put it in the end zone. And I think the Panthers were a little mesmerized right there because he started to go in motion and then he stopped and well, everybody he, false he false started. He wasn't going in motion. He just false started and he realized, hey, I better go in motion. And then thought, hey, I'm carrying the ball. I can't go in motion and reset. The kick is good. And with 
with 9.44 to go in the second period, Lake has taken a 7-0 lead over the Buckeye Panthers. Weatherell, Merritt Scholar in Varsity Football, Melissa Faldowski, Merritt Scholar in National Honor Society, Heather Thomas, Merritt Scholar in National Honor Society, Joe Petrazzi, Odyssey of the Mind and Science Club, Bonnie Hare, Vice President, Student Council and National Honor Society, WTOV and Fox Run Hospital salute all the students at Buckeye Local High School. 7-0 Lake, and one of the things that you have to be able to do is respond from adversity, particularly in the postseason. You can't get in a panic situation. You've got to coolly pull yourself back together and uh, regroup. And Buckeye, which has repeatedly uh, answered the bell this year in big situations, called upon to do so again right here. Yeah, George, as you said, you know, definitely there's no time to panic. There's only, uh, if you're down 7-0, 7 7 9.44 to go in the second quarter, you're going to save your game plan and come right back out there and go right out and back with what he's done earlier there. We're going to see the inside counters. We're going to see the trapping in there. We're going to see the play action boot pass. There's, there's no need to change anything. We just got to quit hurting ourselves and make those tackles when we have the chance to take, take advantage of it. And I'll tell you another thing that would help. They're going to have to complete a few balls Yes. Uh, because this team is going to be tough against the run. There's no doubt about that. The kick is down the middle away from Pobleish again and is taken by Roush. And Roush out to the run it out to about the 40-yard line. So they are not going to be beaten by the 80-yard return and are content to let their defense work uh, with about 60 yards of real estate separating Buckeye from the end zone. So far it's worked. And like you said, George, Jordan, now is the time the Buckeye needs to come out and respond. They need to respond not so much even for the score right now, the ball game, but just for their own mental attitude. They need to know they can take the ball down and move and get some first downs here against Lake. Wing right in motion. That's McCain. Here's Poblish. And Poblish slanting off the left side up to about the 44. A gain of three, maybe four. Nice hole there. And the thing is... We're just one man away from really breaking a big play right there. He, he, get, he did not get tackled, but his long line of scrimmage there, a, a lineman got his arm out there and slowed Chet up just enough so that the inside defense pursuit could come and take him from the inside. Second down and five. They actually gave him a short five yards out of it. Again, it's McCain in motion. The fake to the up back, Poblish with men in pursuit. Good job to get away from tacklers who had made penetration into the Buckeye backfield. First down as Chet Poblish crosses midfield into Uniontown Lake Territory. Nice play there at the play, George. We watched last week in which they dive that back up there in the quarterback. Makes a watch a quarterback here make that spin move around there. Martin Sperry made that play look good last week. A few times right pitch there. Kevin Young. Mr. Poblish makes it look pretty good right there for the first down yardage. I want to see number 25 loose in the secondary, oh, ASAP. Wow. McCain again in motion. The short drop by Hosenfeld. He that throws it, and we're going to get a flag, no question about it. Oh, he hung on to it. No, George, we'll take the ball. All right. That's more it was pass game. interference. The ball caught anyway by Brian Robson, the split end. That is the first time that Hosenfeld has gone his way. And if they can complete some slants and some balls downfield like that, that is going to open up all kinds of avenues. <laughs> for the Buckeye Panther offense. You better believe it. Them linebackers aren't going to be guarding that line of scrimmage like they have right now up to this point in the first quarter and a half. They're going to start to have to loosen up a little bit. Now it's just a nice quick slant pattern, which Ellie put that ball right on the money. So we said, you know, the game was uh, for what? About uh, 17 yards, so surely you're going to take Oh, yeah, he'll take the Coach Pogue will uh, decline the penalty and take the, take the play. Remember in high school football, folks, it's uh, just not at the side of the foul. It's back to the line of scrimmage in his marked start. First and 10, Buckeye at the Uniontown Lake 30-yard line. 8.42 to play in the first half. We hope you are enjoying your eggs, your coffee, your pancakes, and your Panthers from the I formation. There, look McCain at this hole. with an opening, and he's slashing inside the 20-yard line. First, first down. down. Another first down. Nice inside counter there. Again, that, that, that trapping game that uh, has got to work tonight for Buckeye against this tough six and five man line. They're going to see there right there. You see him come right through that hole wide open here. Nice run by Danny. Danny McCain, a six foot, 190 pounder. And they kept running him in motion. 
And that time, he got the call. This time he's in motion again. Hoblish off the left side. Bangs down to the 15-yard line. So, impressively, following the Union Town Lake touchdown, the Panthers have methodically moved the football into scoring position right here. Really need to capitalize. Oh, yeah. this, this is what they needed. As we said, this is this drive was starting for their mental attitude upstairs. They needed to prove themselves. They can move the ball right now. They've proved it. Is that inside down counter again? McCain is going to be wrestled backward by some pretty big bodies. And they have some bodies. Ryan Dutton, number 72. 6'1", 247 pounds. Their coach, Durbin, says we're not as big as we've been in the past. Again, Sooks. Play there made by their linebacker, number 46, coming to the inside, slowed him up for him, and then he finished him off inside. Third down and six. Oh, there he is in the end zone. Pass incomplete, and there was a man open downfield. Roush, I believe the intended receiver. But now it's going to be fourth down and six, and the Panthers facing a challenge. Yeah, that's the advantage that I have over the quarterback up here. Elliott doesn't have the view that I have of big number 86, Joe Comiskey, breaking into the end zone wide open. He picked up the short receiver and looked like the ball was slightly, just slightly behind him. Bringing up down now, what, fourth down and uh, seven for Buckeye. Big call here. Don't be surprised, George, we see that flood pattern and we saw them throw earlier for an incompletion because it was open for that middle receiver throwing a guy deep in the end zone at this point in the football field and the guy along the line of scrimmage and bringing the big tight end, Kaminsky, about 10 yards downfield in the flat area trying to get that ball to him on this sideline over here on the right side. Time to take a break. 7-0 late, 7.08 to go, second period. So Ron Publish has spoken to his Panthers in what is an important fourth and six here. Plenty of time remaining, of course. We're not yet to the midway point of the second period, but Lake has struck first, leads seven to nothing. What does that do to a team psychologically in a playoff game uh, when you fall behind? Does it, does it create some problems? No, it, it really do it doesn't if you have a good senior squad, which Buckeye has out here. They got the psychic to be able to come back right there. Osenfeld throws, it's caught by Poblish. Has he got the first yes, down? Yes. He sure should after that effort. He's across that he's across that 10 yard mark and that's all he had to do to pick up the first down. Terrific effort by Poblish, who is not the biggest guy on the field by any stretch of the imagination. He went up the air. <laughs> the heart of a lion, and he took on some big people back downfield about five or six yards and struggled for additional yardage to secure the first down and it'll be first and goal for the Panthers at the 10. Right here we see him catching the ball there on the 13 yard line and gets away from the Second tackle. Second effort gets him the first down. He's across after the nine yard line so here we go to the outside with Chet. Chet is knocked down at the six or seven on the far side of the field as the clock continues to turn and the Panthers are knocking at the door. Good team pursuit there by Lake to pick him up. He had the speed going the outside, but their linebacker just floated along that line of scrimmage clean and had the angle to cut him off for a short gain. Looked like he had more room to run out there at first. Well, the one thing about him is he's got quick acceleration, so you better stop him early. Once he gets out into your secondary and gets one-on-one -on -one against people back in the secondary, it gets ugly for teams. Power eye right. And this time, Roush they the are going to run it up the middle inside the five-yard line. Roush is wrapped up at the three. Good power football inside there, picking up that yard. He's making this now a third down and three, third down and four for Buckeye. And what this can do in there now is to have those linebackers maybe staying home on this third down call. He can fake the Roush up inside, get that ball outside the Poglish. Third down inside the four yard line. Number nine, McLean, McLean, I believe. Number, yes, it was, it was trying to look counter inside, but again, big number 51 in there for Lake would have no part of it. Eric Swan was right at home to take him down for a very short game. And now we're inside the three yard line, bringing up fourth down and a, called a long two, and Coach Publish wants to talk this one over, George. Big test here for the Panther interior line, which has done such a brilliant job, and it's a veteran group. Bobby Ogden, number 64, the left tackle, and uh, 
Ogden, 6'2", 275 pounds, missed his entire junior season with a knee injury. The knee injury has continued to be a problem this year, but he has played through the pain. Jason Sustick, the left guard. Mason Boyce, who ought to be an all-something center. He is as good as they come in Ohio Valley football, and uh, you can look for him on the old district team at the very least. Right guard Corey Benton, who is as good a guard as you will see anywhere around. R.C. Fellows, a dandy right tackle. And, of course, Kaminsky, we've talked about him at 6'5", 6'6", 230 pounds. Uh, everything you would want in a high school tight end and a whole lot more. Let's see what the Panthers can do. Fourth down and goal. The ball marked at the two-yard line, and they are showing absolutely no indications of bringing on the field goal unit. And right off the bat, we see coming out of the huddle, number 25, the tailback, Chet Polish. The guy here split far right. He got one-on-one -on -one coverage. Don't be surprised. Look at his quick slant here. They give it inside. He's in. He's in. Score! A delayed call and a delayed reaction, but you hear the roar coming from the far stands on the other sideline, and Mike Roush just pulls his way into the end zone, sticks his helmet down, follows his blockers, and bores in. I'm sorry for calling that touchdown before the official did there, George, but there was very little doubt that he crossed that goal plane right off the bat. The late defense was wondering what they were doing with Pobish outside there, and there were people who were looking, and Buckeye come up and give that ball in a quick snap and took advantage of the indecisiveness of the late defense. Put well, Pobish back out in the huddle. We he, he, told me, he, he told me last night they will pull out every rabbit out of the hat imaginable if it takes whatever it takes, fake punts, uh, strange sets, fake field goals, uh, go for it on fourth down in your own territory. Hey, uh, you can't be conservative at this point. You go home if you play it too close to oh, the best. Yes. And right now, Coach Pope's not going to go for no tie at this, with 5.18 to go in the second quarter. We're in the huddle now. We're coming out with a two-point play. Holy mackerel. You talk about a guy who came here with his riverboat gambling suit on tonight. This guy, he, he got all the tools. He got the deck of cards, the dice in his pocket. This is fun. Seven to six, Lake still leads by a point. 5.18 to go. And Buckeye attempting to take the lead. Pobleish, no Pobleish, still he's, fighting. He's in there. No wait. The umpire is doing no good. Well, Lake is going to hold a seven to six lead. And uh, from this vantage point, take a it's look so out here difficult. we can see. He gets hit there on about the two yard line, but watch the momentum just keep the power going forward. And remember, all he has to do is break that plane. Did you see the white shirt start to put his hands up? The number, the number two or number 21 for Lake started to put his hands up thinking they had the ball first. I don't know. Right, it's, hard, it's impossible for you and I with uh, those guys uh, in the striped suits standing on the goal line to tell from this vantage point. All I know is, is that uh, I would like to have seen the two points put on the board. <laughs> I don't think that that is going to be the last score of the game. At least I hope not. Anyway. Seven to six in favor of Lake. We got a dandy going here with 5.18 to go in the second period. And uh, at this point, I guess you cannot fault uh, Ronnie and company. They, they have gambled their way to where they are right now, which is a 7-6 uh, to six ball game. And uh, what the heck, you don't stop uh, and get conservative all of a sudden. Now the, key, the key was, George, that their offense came back and took the ball down the field and moved it against the lake defense and put the ball in the end zone. So at least we went to halftime remaining with 5-16 down 7-6. The people know that they can move the ball and they can score against this team. And we go for the kickoff right here. John Seuss boots it downfield, and a Lake player does a nice job to keep his balance there and is brought down at the 31-yard line. In fact, that was their tailback in there. Uh, Sarnhauter returning that ball. As you said, uh, he made a real nice play because he about went down to the ground but used his uh, offhand to keep his balance and get up here behind the wedge. They had a real nice wedge set up for going. They bring the ball back out to the 29, 30 yard line. Now Buckeye with 513 wants to dig in right now and hold legs to get that lead before halftime, George. I think this is a fairly significant defensive series right here because Lake moved the ball rather easily. 38 yards for that last score. And here we go. 
and this is not good because that's going to be close to a first down and the ball carrier is Eric their Howard. number two tailback Eric Howard. We'll take a look at it here. Buckeye is moving to the outside. This is what we were talking about earlier where they'll take that tailback and they'll run him inside or outside that defensive end this time. They just kicked the defensive end out and took the advantage of running the seam up inside for nine yards. Second down and one. Ball at the late 39-yard line. Under four and a half minutes showing first half. The tailback again, first down, out to the 45. Danny McCain made the tackle, and this time Howard gets first down yardage. And they mark it at the 44-yard line. First and 10 late. Maybe the Buckeye linebackers can pick that up right there. There's a key there, the right guard, or the left guard, excuse me, for late that time. We made a cross block there, and he had himself back about a half yard off the line of scrimmage. You could tell it was coming that way at him. This time he's up on the line of scrimmage. Well, they give it to the up back, and that gets stuffed in a sudden hurry. Hopefully somebody upstairs in the box for Buckeye picked that up there and saw that guard cheating back there and get that message down to the sideline, tell them linebackers to make sure that that guard is all the way up on the line of scrimmage. If not, it would be a pretty good chance he's going to be making a little crosswalk fold over here on this sideline. It seems like on plays that take a little while to develop, they are finding openings, but uh, they're not finding any quick openings. No. That's them big offensive linemen are there just creating the seams. The quarterback hurts, hums it downfield, incomplete, in and out of the hands of Mike Batchik. Yes, that ball was right on the money. Nice job there of Lake running the patterns of taking everything to the right sideline and bringing number 11 back across the field here. So they keep lulling you to sleep with that strong running game and finally uh, get good pass protection here for Kurtz. That ball should be completed for good yardage. Okay, what, Kurt's got an awful strong arm out there, George. That's why he's completed over 100 passes this season. For 1,100 yards, and they really haven't thrown much here in the first half. Again, out of the eye formation, Kurtz throwing on two consecutive plays. Throws it, incomplete. They say that it was caught on one bounce by Batchik. And that was the same play that they just ran before, except to the other sideline. They brought him now across the middle from the left sideline. And again, he was open in the middle of the Panther defense. That completion would have been inside the Buckeye 40-yard line. Well, Kurt took a nice pop there as he delivered the football. We don't quite see it there, but the ball definitely did skip off the grass. 3.22 to go, and Buckeye will get the football. High snap. The punt is away coming downfield, and it'll bounce over the head, all the way down to the nine, maybe the eight yard line. And Pope should have probably tried to fair catch that. Well, and the, it was dangerous, fair catch. That's tough. It's tough on him being the only guy back there. You know, he's got to make sure he has the depth and no ball goes over his head, and yet the ball of the punter tonight is not going to get that far down the field. And if he cheats up there to try to get that ball in a fair catch, you know, that could be the next punt would be flying over his head, and then he's in trouble for moving up too close to the line of scrimmage. It'd be good if Coach Pope could move one guy back there into a short uh, catch position. What you don't want to do here is make some kind of a critical error deep in your own end with three minutes to go in the half. Inside trap. Roush for a very short gain out to the 10-yard line. Gets a couple. And uh, the clock's still running, so no one in any hurry uh, to stop the clock on uh, Lakeside. They have some timeouts remaining, obviously. Let's see what happens after this down and look at the uh, distance to go, whether uh, Coach Durbin will use a timeout. Second and eight. Hosenfeld running to his left. Keeps and is sacked. And that's the third sack of the evening. Is it going to be a quick hitch to the flank on the left sideline? That's Chet Polish who was out there. And there's a timeout called now by Lake with 2.20 to go in the half. But what they did, they went to a bump uh, coverage out there, took an outside linebacker, pulled it up in Chet's face. So when he came up with a quick hitch, it was not there. And he had to bring the ball down and try to run a long line of scrimmage there. Was tackled for a yard loss. So you're looking now at third and nine. And uh, right now, Lake's going to try to hold him down here and get that ball back, try to get another score in. 7-6 in favor of the Blue Streaks of Uniontown Lake. Uniontown, of course, uh, in the Canton area. 
playing a very tough league up there. They've always had solid football teams as far back as I can remember and uh, playing the likes of Akron Ellett beating them 26-13. They smoked North Canton Hoover 43-20. Uh, beat Canton Glen Oak 22-14. Were upended in game four by uh, previously winless Alliance 16-7. Then they thumped on Worcester. Beat New Philly 14-7. Canton Timken, they roughed them up pretty good. Uh, then they lost a two-pointer uh, at the buzzer on a field goal to Maslin Perry, beat Maslin Jackson 19-14, and Ravenna in the season finale 28-13. Buckeye with third down and eight, deep in their own end. Hosenfeld back. We got a man open. He throws, it's caught, and then dropped. Incomplete is the call. Kaminsky is frustrated. Or no, that's not. That's Robson. That's Robson. 8-5 eight eight instead of 8-6. Nice play here. Robinson goes down and finds the opening in the center of the football field there in a crossing pattern and saw the opening. He just geared it down. We'll see right here. Well, that's a nice defenders. ball oh, yeah. by, by Hosenfeld. And uh, a good hit in the secondary. And here's a punt coming up to the 40-yard line where it's fielded on a fair catch. So that'll stop the clock at 2.07. And you've got to give Lake credit for being very efficient utilizing uh, the clock here. Yes, they did. They did a nice job there on that second down play with for a one-yard loss. Just tried to go ahead and use that timeout and give the ball back now inside the 40-yard line with two minutes to go. And don't be surprised now. We do see the ball more thrown in the air. What they did early in the ball game was really take a good look at Kurtz's arm. George. Well, they scored in a hurry from 38 yards out for their uh, touchdown to go on top. And they've got about 39 yards to go here in two minutes and seven seconds with which to operate. Son Hunter's back in there, tailback it looks like. And he gets the call on a first down play to the 35 and struggles ahead to the 33-yard line. Danny McCain in on the stop. I can see why the Buckeye coaches said that their tailback production did not drop off much with these two young guys. They were just probably as good as uh, athletes and runners as the uh, stars they lost, but they just didn't have the playing time. Again in the eye, second down and three. Here's a pass. We got him Whoa. back. Hold on. Get him. Roush got him. Roush cleaned him up, and I believe that was number 23. Ray Tai. Ray Tai came in Ray and uh, really put the hit on him at first here. Just as he was ready to slip away, Roush put him under. We'll take a look at it right here at the top of your screen, folks. You see John Ray Tai coming there on the corner blitz. Nice job. And right there by Ray Tai, and then he, he is absolutely mugged by Roush. And one thing about this Buckeye defense this year is that they set a school record with 25 sacks. Uh, there have been four sacks in this game tonight. If you are going to pass the football, somebody is going to put pressure on you from this defense sooner or later. Yes, yes. And I tell you, with 1.23 to go here, the thing now that the Buckeye cannot do is allow a big play uh, against their defense. Now looking at third and 12. So the, who's out? I uh, uh, can't quite see who's out there in the field, which I imagine is their defensive coordinator out there for uh, Buckeye. Uh, who is the defensive coordinator? I know Phil Pest handles I believe it's uh, uh, lineman. It was Blair. Yes, that's Blair out there, isn't that? Yes, there's Coach Klosser out there in the huddle talking with him. And uh, the thing you know, he right now, he's behind his defensive lineman out there. Make sure you get pressure. He's telling his sleeper or his spy to stay at home for the middle screens, middle draws. He's reminding the outside people of the screen draw possibilities. And remind the secondary not to come up on any type of reverse action the way they can throw the football off of it. It'll be third down and 12, Lake at its uh, at Buckeye's 42-yard line. And here comes the trip formation. They're in their passing mode. Single setback in behind Kurtz. And Kurtz will throw, and he is attacked. The ball should have been intercepted, but good pressure. Joe Kaminsky almost got the interception, and again, you saw... Take a look Who was here. it? Was Dan it McCain I coming? believe that was Danny McCain coming up the middle there. Right there he goes, yes, grabbing from behind. You betcha. He hit Kurtz just as the ball was released, and that ball could easily have been picked off downfield. All right now, the, the decision now goes to the lake sideline, and uh, whether they're going to know there's timeout to be called by leg. Yes, yes. Coach Durbin down here is having a hard time making up his mind with 1.18 to go in the half. 
on his 42-yard line. Does he want to punt the ball or go ahead and go for it on fourth down and give the ball back to the Panthers if he doesn't make it? I, I think you're going to see him going for it. He has confidence in his defense, George. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to take a break and find out. We'll be right back. Guy six. And I think this is a, a fairly significant play call right here. Oh, yes. And really, it's really not much of a gamble, George, with only 118 to go and the way his defense playing out there for Coach Durbin to go ahead and go for it here with the arm that Kurtz has shown us tonight. Kurtz there's has time. Throws. First ball down. Caught for a first down at the 26 yard line. Got out there in the flat by Chris Espega. We'll see a nice here, a nice dual pattern out here run by the twin receivers. Chris Absiga is okay. out here in a perfect throw, as you can see right there. And right in your living room, folks. Looks like he was going to try to make a streak up the sideline, but he broke it off for the first down yardage. 113 to go. Well, this is where we got to get tough defensively. Kurtz throwing to the far side over the head and incomplete. It seems like this last two minutes have been an eternity. If you're from a Buckeye local staff member, you got to be thinking, we, when are we going to be able to get out of here and regroup? I tell you what, uh, Kurtz is really showing a strong arm because the ball's here on the left hash. He threw that ball there on a 15-yard out to that far sideline, and that ball was on a rope. So we're looking at a young man that got a real strong arm. Well, he can throw them laterally. I don't want to see one downfield right about now. Yeah, but them lateral passes of 12, 15 yards at a time will kill you eventually. There's the lob. He doesn't see it. Oh, what a brilliant defensive effort by Chet Poblish. Yes, and the receiver did not find the ball to our advantage, but Chet picked up the ball before he did and got his hand up there to knock it down in the end zone. Nice Matt, ball here by Kurtz. Uh, Mike Batchik was open and Kurtz threw. This is exactly what uh, I was talking about. And uh, he is open momentarily, but excellent closing speed there by Poblish. We couldn't sit there in a replay, but the receiver never did see the football. All right, third down and 10. Still a minute, two. Kurtz, pressure. He got away from it again. Ball caught. And somebody better make a tackle here real soon. we got real problems. All right, we got a flag. Let's see what the flag's coming back for. Flag on the 11-yard line. The officials over there talking right now. Let's see if we can pick something up here on the replay. And we've got a clip against Lake. We'll see if we can see it at the top of the screen. There it, right there it is. Well, that was an unnecessary block by Lake. Oh, wow. Unnecessary uh, completely. I mean, he was 10 yards going away from the ball carrier, and Lake was dancing in the end zone. Good break for the Panthers. Going to bring the ball back now. Apsega would have had a touchdown reception right there. I tell you what, Kurtz, though, has proved to be very, very uh, elusive in that uh, backfield there, George. We've had guys now hang on two or three times, and he is just dropping himself down and getting out, but the Buckeye defender's got to realize now that his elusive move is to kind of duck underneath them, so they've got to start going in a little bit lower to make their tackles on him. And quite honestly, and the Buckeye players will admit this, this has been a bad hands first half for oh, the Panthers. Boy, I tell you what. Tackling opportunities, interception opportunities, and reception opportunities. Here we go again in the air. Kurtz down the middle. Overthrown incomplete. They want an interference call back there. Again, the intended receiver is Batchik. Running a post. We'll take a we'll look, look at, at it here. again. And I tell you what, Dave Cornish does get an arm wrapped around him. But let's see if we can see when it is. Oh. Okay. You know, in high school football, there is no rule about a catchable football, a catchable no, football like no. there is in the NFL. So if, in fact, he had been interfered with, whether the ball was catchable or not, uh, that is an infraction. But again, no way we can tell from here if there was any illegal contact. The officials say no, and Kurt says, I'm humming again. Ball caught. First down. Will this first half ever end? 38 seconds, 38.1 to go. And there's that deep outside pattern that uh, Kurtz can throw. 
Cap Sega. Watch this, watch this, George, on the, on the line. That ball's going a great distance across that football field. Uh, am I seeing That's things tough. here? I mean, for a quarter and a half, all this team did was line up in the eye and run power football, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, th this is a total departure from what they were doing. Uh, this, this is Obviously, they have the wherewithal. They're Ball in the end zone incomplete. Intended again for Batchik. So the Batchik, they go to him on one play, and Apsiga, uh, the wide out and the flanker, uh, on successive passing opportunities. Still 33.2 seconds remaining. That's Lake up 7-6. to six. That's an eternity, George. Oh, it's like, when will it end here? Let's see. Coach is over the sideline talking to uh, Coach Durbin. He got the place, and there's right there's Jeff uh, on the sideline. After every play, they can. The quarterback is running the sideline, getting the play verbally from him, keeping their front line receivers in there. Kurtz, he's escaping. Loose, in. drilled as he throws, and I'm telling you one thing. Ben, ben Bailey. Bailey put an absolutely fearsome hit on Kurtz, who got rid of the football, and uh, the intended receiver downfield was Apsiga. Good coverage back here. Watch the blue shirts in the secondary taking away the receivers. And again, there's Kurtz eluding him, and right there is the kiss in the middle. And again, Kurtz just came to the sideline, the sideline here and talked to Coach Durbin. He got the play going back out with 26.9, third and 10 from the 12-yard line. They line up in the eye, third down and 10. Back, Kurtz. Kurtz on the move. Kurtz lobs. Ball in and out of the hands. Again, an opportunity for an interception. Cornish. Dave Cornish did a nice job of coverage there against the intended receiver, Batching. And it went through both their hands. Went through Cornish's hands. Watch, watch this, folks. Again, good. I'm really impressed with this quarterback, George. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, the Panther defenders are doing a heck of a job at bullet dodging here late in the first half. One thing about Kurtz, George, what did he... Uh, well, I wish we could see that replay again. I thought he was on the 10-yard line when he threw that football. Okay, my eyes were wrong. Well, fourth and 10, and I don't need to tell you, this is huge. Here they come out. Kurtz on a short drop. And he is kissed, and there comes big number 86, Joe Comiskey, come up the middle. Number 42 from the outside, come in there to put a pop on him again. Mike Wilt. Take a look at this, folks. Wow. Here come the Panthers. There you see Wilt, number 42, McCain, and Kaminsky all arrive at about the same time, and Kurtz was in a vice of blue. And we're, we're finally done, going to get this Five. first half over, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Much to the relief of the Buckeye Panther coaches. Your halftime score, Lake 7, Buckeye 6. In favor of Uniontown Lake, and we introduce the Buckeye Panther marching band.
Lifeline and trumpet soloist David Sabo in the Elvis Presley hit Blue Suede Shoes. Seven, Buckeye Local 6. We get ready to go for the third quarter. This is one program which has established a great tradition over the years, Ty Fleming, against one which is trying to establish its own identity in Ohio high school football. Yes, and this is how you do it at playoff time. You know, the, the, uh, the teams around the state, believe me, all the eyes go, go to the uh, papers and they pick up the scores and people start watching those uh, teams in there year in, year out. And that's how you establish yourself as a quality program uh, making this playoff. So and we're of course, ready. we'll be kicking off, George. I'm sorry, yep. go ahead. Yeah, I was going to mention Lake had been uh, state runners-up in 1991 and last year. A uh, great game that year when they beat uh, Big Red and wound up in the finals. Lost to an unbelievable Fostoria team that was nationally ranked. Then they lost to St. Mary's Memorial, uh, which is a two-time state champion in the finals last year. Been to the final four four times in the 90s and uh, lead the Buckeye Panthers 7-6 to six as uh, we get set to kick the second half and it'll be John Seuss booting away. Seuss wearing number 88 right there in your picture. And uh, Buckeye again will have a big defensive stand. Ball gets away and rolls into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. First and 10 Lake at its own 20. So are we gonna see the running Lake team or the passing? I mean, it was one or the other in the first half. It wasn't uh, what I would call a, a mix no. of it pass and run. They ran for a while, then they passed for it. It was Dr. Jekyll, and then all of a sudden out came Mr. Hyde. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I look for right now, though, seriously, for, for Lake to come back out and try to establish the ground game and keep the uh, ball out of the hands of uh, the Panther offense. And maybe a, a fumble or some kind of a turnover. The Panthers had some turnover opportunities in the first half but just couldn't come up with it and no gain on first down nice job there by the linebackers closing in there the defensive line here like big number 63 blocked up the way there for the Panthers Joe Carson uh, and then the linebackers uh, came in there and cleaned up on him and they're real nice as a front defensively uh, the Panthers probably did as well as any OVAC team this year when you look at Wilt Runovich and Hepburn and Roush up front with McCain, Kaminsky, Treckle, and Ray Ty backing them up. And uh, Kurt's pass incomplete to the far side. And right away, they're going to find themselves in a third down and nine. Ball just slightly out thrown there to the uh, wide receiver. Absiga. That's Absiga out there again, number 21. Made a nice dive, tried to pick it up. But again, it always it amazes me, George, how the quarterback here always comes from Lake. After every down, he runs over here to the sideline and talks to the coach on the sideline to have the play set into him. Twin receivers out to the right flanker in the slot and here is Kurtz with men bearing down on him they missed a chance to sack him not this time Big this time he is horse collared by down. Kaminsky back him up clear on the 11 yard line we got a man down <laughs> 
Take a look at it here. We see the Buckeye defenders is coming out and all out blitz after him. Right there goes number 33, Roush, Roush coming from the defensive end spot on the right well, side. Finally, it's Kamensky who's that long arm. That was like rope calf, calf and a rope. You know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I, I, I rodeo, know. rope and the calf <laughs> is what I'm trying to say, son. But at least we got Kurt Stone <laughs> for a loss that time. He's been so darn elusive for us in the first half that uh, it's nice to see him thrown down for a 10-yard loss, bringing up fourth down and 20. That's sack for a sack number five. Kroger is in for what that's about five for the game that's about 250 or so well, we got Chet probably sliding up back here now on the 44 yard line Chet be wise probably move up a little bit where their punting game's gone tonight so we can get one on a fly here and the kick and is away coming from away from Poblish at the 50. Chet, get away from it, please. Now ball rolling dead at the 42. So they kicked themselves out of a pretty good hole. Yes, but at did. the same time, the Panthers will have good field position for their first offensive possession of the half. And I'll tell you what they did. In a minute and 11 seconds, uh, they got Lake's offense off the field and took possession of the football. Now let's see what kind of halftime adjustments the offense made now for the Panthers and really see if we see anything different. It's always interesting on that first series of the third quarter, the adjustments made by both teams, and by the looks of the first series, we made some pretty good defensive adjustments. McCain in motion. The pitch. Here is Chet. Chet is not going to get far. A real nice job out there. The outside linebacker for the late team out here would not let the defender get to him. He just maintained himself on his outside leverage. You will see it. Chet trying to go to the sideline. And this is a play in which the Panthers are very dangerous. If Publish can get past uh, the first line of attack right here, but he is unable to do so. Good pursuit to the outside by Apsiga. But in talking all that time, we picked up two yards. So we're looking out second and eight from the 45. The handoff and uh oh. Good inside pressure there by big number 66 for Lake coming off of his defensive tackle Steve spot. Steve Briggs. Steve Briggs is in the backfield and really diagnosed that play well. That was that double inside counter that we ran in the first half. With he Let almost took the handoff. Instead, he takes McCain down for a loss and it'll be third and ten. Yes, he came from his uh, defensive tackle spot here on the left-hand side and just went right with the ball carrier. Rosenfeld in trouble. Rosenfeld is brought down at the very least for no gain and perhaps a loss of a yard. Big number 51 in there again, Swain. We'll take a look at it here. Eric Swain, number 51, fights off a block. And takes and him down to the line of scrimmage. Sure does. Sack, another sack for $50 from the Kroger Food and Drug Company. And uh, Matthews kicks it and not much yardage turned around here no. in Buckeye's favor as Lake will have good field position in its own 37 so you see the hit down here the deep back uh, gets rocked and socked one like Ben Bailey fierce. Ben Bailey who is definitely an underrated player on this Buckeye local team. A lot of other guys get the ink. If you look at Ben Bailey's numbers, he stacks up with a lot of people around the OVAC this year. Lake at its own 39-yard line, first and pitch 10, the sweep. pitch. And they'll catch him from behind after a gain of about five yards. They do love to run that play. They'll run that play any place on the football field, according to the Buckeye coaching staff, down on the goal line or up there in the middle of the field. We'll take a look at it right here. You see the onside guard kicking out there, and the tailback then just reads the tight end and fullback's block. Sonhalter with a gain of four. Panthers dig in defensively, second down, six coming up. Here we come with some pressure and again. Tailback is caught from behind and wheeled down by Kaminsky. And Kaminsky is starting to get after people. Yes, he made a nice adjustment at halftime. He took those gloves off. Now he's not going to really grab onto people a little bit better in this <laughs> half. But he did a nice job there blitzing from his linebacker spot the whole way from the backside and had the speed to catch the ball carrier from behind, bringing up third down and eight for Lake. 
And I don't think there's any question that those gloves bothered Kaminsky in the first half. Now he's starting to bother the late again. offensive people. Kurtz throws. Ball is caught for a first down at Let's the 49. The I think he is just... Wow, it's going to be close. It's going to be close, but it looked like the official did give him a nice forward progress over there. And their receiver is not getting up either inside the Panther bench. And we have a player shaking up. It is one of the blue streaks. Epsiga was hit hard from behind. I don't know if he was bruised in the back or whether he twisted a leg. We're going to take a break here. It's still Lake 7 and Buckeye 6 with 7.18 to go in the third period. Buckeye 24 yard line. Thank goodness we got up here in time to catch that. The way they're getting them bounces tonight, that ball would have rolled down inside the 10 on us again. But we'll take the ball to the 24 yard line. Now see if our offense can get something moving, George. Well, this has become a battle of field position and defense right now. Yes. And that. when you've got the lead, you're more than happy to do it. You, you, you'll take uh, let that clock the winding run. of the clock. That's, That's exactly, exactly right. Let that clock run and just play defense. The ball's in the Panthers' court right now. Out of the I formation, they run it. We boot pass. And Hosenfeld almost intercepted the intended receiver was Dave Cornish and number 52 Sam Mitchell got a big pop there and almost took it down we'll take a look out here Sam Mitchell did a real nice job that Buckeyes running that flood pattern they had a man short and Mitchell took him and his ball was thrown he dropped back All right there's why he, uh, he couldn't get a paw on it nice job governing two men in the area second down and ten Buckeye from its own 24 Hosenfeld Looks to his left this time. He is being he chased run. out of the pocket. He needs a block on the near side and gets one at the 35. And he is up to the 37 and a first down. Danny McCain was downfield. I don't think I see any flags out there. Move the sticks, gentlemen. It's a first down Buckeye Panthers. There's the break we might need to get ourselves out of that little offensive rut we were in the first couple series now this half. Good pressure back there again by Ryan Dutton, the big fella, but Hosenfeld too quick for him and gets the block by Danny McCain right there, as you saw on Sam Mitchell. And the Buckeye Panthers have the football up near the 38-yard line. This is going to be a short game. Yes, inside counter there to McCain coming back off his wing spot there and only picked up two yards. And McLean carried the ball. Somehow, some way, George, we got to get Pobleach loose in the secondary. Get some excitement going here. But I tell you what, the way that this uh, late defense is playing right now is going to be awful tough because they got the speed to contain him on the outside. And the difference right now is, is that occasionally Lake has been able to throw the ball and the Panthers' passing game, for one reason or the other, has been ineffective here. The pitch back, Pobleach turns the corner to the 40 and gets ahead to the 44-yard line where he'll be about three yards shy of the first down it'll be third down about three maybe four dive option right here and Elliott really didn't have time to option him but I'll take a look at this right here the fake to McCain and there's a defensive end on him right now and he got to get that ball away to Pove and now it's just a foot race and Chet does outrun the two defenders out here but the, the defensive back came off his block there and was able to pull him down third, third down and four Pass. There he is. Throws. Ball caught this time by Kaminsky. He's loose at the 45, the 40, down to the 30-yard line. Uh, boy, Danny. Burn them gloves, big guy. I don't believe we'll be seeing the gloves again on the hands of Joe Kaminsky this evening. No, right there. Nice pop pass. Elliott puts the ball right on the money after the dive. They're just waiting until he cleared the linebackers and hit his big target. Took the ball down now to the 30-yard line. That's a 230-pound freight train running through your secondary right there. The handoff to Poblish looks for a block. Cracks the right side and... They've got him at the 28-yard line, but the Panthers have something humming here. Under five minutes to go in the third quarter. Seven to six, Blake still leads by one. I hear Chet is trying to follow his double guard pull out there. But the late defense by Jason Sustic. Came out of there nice and counting for a two-yard gain, so we're looking now at second down and eight, but we're in four-down territory, George. Out of the eye, they fake this time, and here is Hosenfeld. He dumps it off on a 
short route to the far side, and it's caught by Roush. Going to take us down there with about two yards short of the first down, George. Nice hand by Roush out there in the flat to put that ball in. Is complete. Take a look out of here. You know, again, this is a flood pass that we've been seeing all night long. By that, again, I mean they have a, a deep man about 20 yards downfield. The short man coming right there, probably about five yards. We got a man right in the middle of the two putting pressure on their flat people. If it sounds like I'm munching on popcorn, I am. I'm getting a little nervous here. First down. First down in a hole. Oh, boy, the Danny. Secondary. It's Danny McCain. He's to the 10-yard line of Uniontown Lake. And that big offensive wall of the Buckeye Panthers starting to move some bodies. Yes, and perfect field position is a, as a sideline coach you love to have. You got that first down watch here right there. Danny just powers that ball up through the middle, carries some ball, carrier four or five yards, gets tackled on the 11 yard line. So we get a first down, George, on the one yard line. They had McCain and Roush as the setbacks that time. And we got Lake, we got Lake right. reeling right now. And there's a timeout by the Blue Stricks to try to get their defense calmed down to keep us out of the end zone with 3.42 to go in the third quarter. Nice drive we put together here. The, the big key right there was that scramble by Elliott for that first down there. When he was bogged up on that left sideline, he came back to the right sideline. Then the nice big pop pass to Kaminsky. And this is something we talked about, George, that we were going to have to do in the second half. And that was to get some air game going. And so far, we've been able to do it and mix it up against the Lake defense. And the blue streaks right now are back on their heels. And Coach Durbin's calling that timeout, chewing some butts out there, trying to keep them out of the end zone. Well, any kind of a score uh, is important in this oh, situation. Yes. And so it's, it's imperative that the Panthers get something. A field goal would give them the lead. Uh, a touchdown certainly would give them a little bit of a cushion. Yeah, any, like you say, any type of score, because what that's going to do is what we just talked about as they started this uh, series, is that Lake was content to just keep hunting the ball away and keep field position and play defense. And now if we get a score in here, they're going to have to change their offensive philosophy and start taking a little more gambles and start opening up and going for things. Here's Pobish again, spinning far to the right side. We saw the score in the first down from. I love Mason Boyce, the center. I mean, he runs to the line of scrimmage before every play and is a big leader on that front. McCain whirls ahead inside the 10-yard line. He's down at about the 7. Nice running in there by Danny. He was going off the right side here between the right guard and tackle, and it was logged up there, and he just slipped himself back in the center of the field, and he ran behind the big guy you just talked about, Mason Boyce, who cleaned out some area in the middle for him, bringing up second down and 7 from the 8-yard line. Power on. I right. Now we're going to throw it. and fell. Looking and throwing. The ball is caught inside the five-yard line. And uh, McCain made the reception. He is brought down at the four. And some frustration there on the part of some of the Blue Streaks defensive unit. Nice job there by McCain. You see him slipping out there after the ball got faked to him there and came in there wide open in the flat area. And the ball's thrown to Elliott to him to the four-yard line. And again, this is the key where that ball was placed because we can still get that first down. So we got two downs to pick up a long three. And the field goal would be from a very awkward angle here uh, if they would elect to do so. I would imagine they're going to try to run this toward the middle of the field. Now they're going to pitch it out to Chet. Chet. He is in. Four. Chet. Nice Hobley. run out there. He made a nice break to the inside after he got around the end. It looked like he was going to try to go up inside. It was boggled up. And he had enough speed and leg drive to pull himself to the outside. Take a look out here. Watch that big block out here. Is that Roush out there and Kaminsky out in front of yep. him? Right Perfect there's the dip pitch in. too. Perfect pitch by Hosenfeld. Excellent blocking and touchdown Buckeye Local. They lead 12 to 7. Big extra point coming up right here. Now going for two to get back to a seven point lead. Up by five now with 2.26 to go in the third quarter. And keep in mind, with a five-point lead, if they don't make this, a touchdown, and they would be behind. Screen, though, throws short to McCain. Yes, the nice pressure came inside by their people from the inside. Number 71, Jeremy Yoder, came inside, had Ellie Gear that ball looking quicker than he wanted to. They were trying to go with the screen to the left flat out there to McCain. But with 2.26 to go, we'll take a 12-7 lead, George, and put the pressure back on the 
blue streaks now to try to get something going offensively. Right, and the key element here is that now Lake must score a touchdown to take the lead or kick two field goals. Uh, and, and, and the Panthers have got to defend their end zone. Uh, it's one of those things now where you've got 14 minutes and 26 seconds in which to keep a very good football team out of the end zone. But keep in mind that, again, a lot of these players on the lake side of the football are two-way players. Hopefully, if there is fatigue, they would be the team suffering uh, from that a, a bit more than, than Buckeye Lope. Hopefully. You don't know. No, a, 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 cool, a cool night like this, George, that's going to be a, a problem. I don't think we're really going to have to see coming to play too much. What may come into play, no, for Buckeye right now is the spirit that's put into their hind ends. Because right now, they got that 12-7 lead, and they're pumped up, and that defense is going to have to start doing some popping and try to take Kirch out of the ball game because I think we're going to see that ball thrown into the air a little bit more than we saw on the earlier series. The Panthers defeated Upper St. Clair in their opening game, which was a big confidence builder, and this game is taking on a similar complexion. The return will give Lake good field position. Eric Howard brings it back out across the 35 to the 37-yard line. First and 10, Uniontown Lake. But I tell you what, this would be a great defensive stand right now. We can hold the three downs and get them out because that's going to put a little bit of doubt in their offensive minds where they can move the ball against us in the second half. Especially now with Buckeye being able to mix uh, and the pass and the run a little better here in the second half. Now you've got Lake's defense a little bit off balance. Here are the blue streaks. The give to the tailback. An opening on the left side closes quickly as someone made an ankle tackle. Danny McCain, the first guy to step up. Here comes a yellow flag yeah, or something. Dead ball. Personal foul. Panther. Oh, for crying out loud. That wasn't even around the ball. Well, one way or another, whether whether it's a good call or, or whether it's warranted, and I assume that uh, I'll trust the uh, officials that it was warranted, you can't have these kinds of mistakes. Yeah, You've just taken the lead 12 to 7. Not a ball game like this, George. And you can't let your opponent goad you into doing something foolish, uh, like committing a 15-yard foul. And that's exactly what's happened. It'll be first and 10. Uniontown Lake at the Buckeye 45, and they come in their power eye right this time, give it to the tailback, he's at the 40, down to the 37, and here comes Lake. Just good old power foot, football in there by Lake. You'll see right here, power eye, both guys just leading up through for him, and Howard picks his hole well, picks up seven yards, looking now at second and three from the Buckeye 38-yard line. Eric Howard. Second down three. Lake again in the power eye formation. Give it to the tailback again, but he is snuffed out. That time they took Howard out of the ball game and put Sonhauter back in the ball game. And he was held for a one-yard loss there. Good job by the entire right side here. We'll see coming to the bottom of our screen. The Panther defense right there. Ben Bailey was involved in the play. And number 44. Also we'll that Danny number McCain. All night long. What a game he's playing. Absolutely. Roush also came late just in case. Under a minute to play in the third quarter. 12-7 Buckeye. Third down and a long three. Power eye right. Pitch sweep, long count. Fighting for yardage, first down. Barnhart picked up the first down there. There's that, on the power eye, there's that pitch sweep they love to go to that right side with. Take a look there at the top of the screen, folks. You see their offensive linemen here just walking down inside. And they got off the ball pretty good that time. Yes, they did. Watch him pick his way, No, Nice running. Good job by Sonhalder to get the first down. His time will expire here in the third quarter. They will let the clock run down. At the end of three. Our Buckeye Local Panthers 12. Uniontown Lake 7. Back with what should be a thrilling fourth quarter. Right after these messages. As I try to speak to you with a mouth full of rather salty popcorn. 12-7 Panthers. 
And I would say that this is a fairly significant defensive oh, stand. Oh, we're oh, oh, that right boy, are we ever. We're down on the 33-yard line right now. We're in four-down territory, and we've got to make some stop here on the early downs to put them into a long situation where they're going to put that ball up in the air. But I tell you what, Jeff Durbin's just challenged his offensive line to come out and take us off the line of scrimmage, and so far they've done that in this series, plus 80 with that big 15-yard penalty against us to put the ball down inside our red zone. Now's the time for the Panther defense to step up and put their graphs on them. They're, they're staying in that power eye formation. Coach Durbin is really putting this to his offensive line. People saying, it's your ball game, do it. First and 10 at the Buckeye 34. They give again to Sonholder, the tailback. He gets to about the 30. Gain of three, maybe four. Tell you what, there's a host of people in there on that blue making that tackle. You saw number 44, you saw number 31 in there, you saw number 33, and you saw the interior people in there. Look like big number 66, uh, Hepburn. You have to caution against the play action pass oh, right boy, do I tell you, look at our defense. We've got everybody within five yards of the line of scrimmage, but here it comes. There it is. But the defenders are both loose. Yeah, he's calling it dead, excuse me. That's another sack. And that's what I'm telling you. If you are going to throw the football against this defense, then you better get rid of it pretty quick or somebody is in your face. Take Steve look Briggs right recovered, but uh, you can see Kurtz is inundated there by John Raytai. John Raytai came in there early and put the pressure on him from his outside linebacker spot, and then the hosts of the blue people cleaned him up. So now we're looking Georgia third and 14. This is a big defensive play. Ball is incomplete. Nice no coverage flags. out there by Poblish. Chet Poblish on the intended receiver, Mike Batchik. That is spelled B-A-T-C-H-I-K. Take a look at it here. Good job by the Lake people to give him time to get back here and set and throw the football. But we'll see the end of the play. Nice job, he wrapped him up just as the ball got there. Perfect timing, bringing up fourth and 13 now from the 36 yard line. Decision time again now for the Blue Streaks. And they're gonna go for it, George. Let's hold this right here and get good field position out of this. 10.39 to go, fourth and 13. They're looking He's deep open. down the middle. He dropped it. Incomplete. Oh my goodness. Publish on the coverage. Batchik, the intended receiver, and he is down either injured or in frustration. Take a look at it here. Kurtz drops back. He picks up a receiver. He's been making that sideline break all night long this time. He made a nice slant move to the post, and he is wide open. Ball's put right on the money just as it's hitting his hands. There's Chet hitting him low, but the ball was wow. coming out before the contact. First down for Panthers. There's another look at it from a different angle, folks. And Kurtz throws just a beautiful ball, ball right here. Look at that, right on the money. Quite frankly, both teams have missed golden opportunities to make clutch receptions. On either the third or the fourth down play, there, there was decent coverage on both plays, but those balls could have been caught. And of course, could have been. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> really, in that case, that ball should have been caught. And in the first half, we saw several instances where uh, the Panthers missed the opportunity missed the to catch the ball. Also, but that's a, really a key play. He's down inside the five-yard line there, George. We've given them the first down. And uh, by dropping that now with 10.32 to go in the ball game, we're going to take over on the 37-yard line. And we need to run some clock off the... Uh, down the board down there and get some first downs here and get some field position established again. But you see what happens, George, by, by knocking them out. Uh, we'll take a look at it here. Maybe we can see what happens to him. They're working on his knee as he leaves the ground. See if that yeah, right there, left knee. I think knee, he comes awkwardly. It's hard Pope to tell. Man. Now the knee is going to come hard, as you see. Yes, it's going up underneath Pope's thing with Pope's weight on top of it. Yeah. That's the leg they're working on, George, and they're yeah. trying to get that knee uh, checked out there. See if there's any looseness there in the tendon area. Well, they lost a stellar tailback, and uh, uh, my understanding is that the senior tailback was one fine football player. Uh, they can't afford any more injuries here. 10.32 to go. 
Love seven Buckeye. Get that last two out of your mouth. First yeah. and ten for the Panthers on the 37 yard line. Power <laughs> eye. Hand off a of post on the right side for good yardage. Picks Out up the nine 45. yards. All right, Chad. Let's go, Panthers. Well, it's been five years since you stood on the sidelines of <laughs> the Shady Side Tigers, <laughs> and you can still feel that sense <laughs> and, uh, of adrenaline that goes through there's, you. There's, what, what does it feel like to be involved in something like this from a coaching perspective? I, I tell you, during the game, you really don't know the difference between this ball game and the first ball game of the year, the preparation for it. But once the game gets started, it's just a football game right now. And all, all you're trying to do on that sideline is to make sure your kids just play within their capabilities. First down, looks like Rush picking up. Yes. Mike Roush, you betcha. Picking up the first down there for us on the 48-yard line. The thing that you got to do as a head coach on that sideline is, is just prepare your kids weekend, you know, just like a weekend, week out ball game, and try to keep the distractions away from you. That's the hardest part is to make sure the people in town let the kids alone, let them get prepared for the game by the coaches. First and ten, power eye right once again. Poblish gets the call. Hang on to the football, Chet. Chet running to the far sideline, out of bounds, stops the clock with 9.36 to go, and a gain of about three. But uh, on the previous carry, Roush got the first down yardage, and Ronnie Poblish told me before the season that, in his honest opinion, Roush was as good a high school fullback as you will see, and he responded with a 500-yard campaign. And he's and, shown it tonight, George. And certainly his blocking and running, along with the efforts of Danny McCain, have opened up a lot of things in that offense for Chet Poblish and company, and the whole oh, pile oh, continues forward Danny near the McCain, first down. Nice leg drive by McCain out there, along with his offensive line. You see big number 53, Jason Stuttick, get off the ball in that foul. And he was stopped back there at the line of scrimmage, and just a leg drive, Taylor the pile forward. We're looking now at third and a long one. That's a nice thing about having those two backs in there like that, McCain and Roush. Buckeyes moving their power eye back and forth from side to side. And either guy can be the fullback, either guy can be the blocking back. And they give it off again to Roush, who is going to be very, very close. to depend upon the spot. It looks like from our angle, George might just be slightly short. Fourth down and about a half yard. Fish ought to call timeout and measure at this point in the ball game with this much riding on it. That's wow, sure. I, I'll you. tell you what. If Buckeye is, is forced into a fourth down, and, and I'm afraid they are because I don't like where they spotted the ball here, but if they if they have to look at a fourth down, you got a tough time. I mean, oh. the, the hunting game hasn't been spectacular. Coach Povich is going to earn his 25 cents tonight. <laughs> As they pull it out, yes. You can see it right there. We are about eight inches short but bringing up now fourth down from the 43 yard line at decision time and coach Povich has no and that's the button in his mind well, he doesn't no want to get, i don't think he's going to take a chance to get the punt blocked here either there's so. no hesitation we're going for the first down i love this you're basically you're putting your team out there and telling them if you're a champion get me a foot i don't even need a yard here i need the length of the football fourth and one power eye Rosenfeld under center. They're off. First down, Panthers. Nice job out there by Elliott. Must have gave a nice hard count. Went on a long count out there and drew him off sides. It is an offside call. Take a look and at it right look here. Up front there, I do not see anyone moving. Hosenfeld no. did not do anything, I don't think, to uh, deceive no, the defenders. He didn't give a head bob away. He couldn't hear. He probably gave a nice loud hut out there to draw him off sides. Big first down for the Panthers now on the 38-yard line with 8.34 and the clock moving, George. Power eye right. First and ten, Hosenfeld pitching, Poblish gets loose in the oh second my goodness, Look at that streak! At the top, he's that's, in there! That's what a, you talk about a blue streak, did you see him turn on the Jets? Oh, oh he came out of a cannon, George! Oh, you're going to love that, folks. Here we go again on the replay. Watch this. I mean, right about now he says, Good night, Charlie Brown. I'm they turning tripped on. him here, too. And he does a brilliant job to stay on his feet at the 10-yard line. Go, Chet. Big, big touchdown. It puts us up by 11. 
Officials time out here while we've got a helmet adjustment out there by Roush. Now he's going to strap it on, get ready to go, and put a block on somebody. So the Panthers, for the moment, have seized control of this game in an effort to win their first playoff game in the history of the school. John Seuss. Kick is up. Seuss kicks. It's good. Ho -ho! 19 to 7, a 12 point cushion now. And Buckeye Local, I tell you this, you're going to have your work cut out for you in trying to score two touchdowns against the Buckeye Local defense in eight minutes and 16 seconds. Well, we were talking, we were talking, or let's take a little look at this replay. Here's that spin move by L.A. pushing that ball outside to Chet. Nice blocking outside. Wish I could give credit out there who those two guys were making those key blocks. But right now, Ch Chet really, uh, you had to see it in person, folks. And I know you people are watching it over here tonight. When he made that turn up field boy, did the Jets get turned on? That's one of them four, 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 five, 40 yard dash speeds right up through there. But anyway, back to what I started to say. Dr. Jekyll, I'm afraid, on the sideline. Mr. Hyde's down on the football field. And we're going to see that ball up in the air by the Blue Streets. Yeah, they're going to have to start humming it. And the thing that we've had good luck with, and that is our blitzing game, by bringing our linebackers at him inside there has put good pressure on Curtis half and uh, really taking our game in the air to the sideline a little bit. So now it's going to be up for that defense again to put the pressure on him and let our secondary people try to pick one off. And the kick coming down to the 15-yard line. Oh, my. He's got an opening to the 35. Still going out to the 37, maybe the 38-yard line. So Lake will take over with just over eight minutes to go in this football game. You know, we were talking about uh, the speed factor and uh, debating uh, who might be the fastest back in the Valley this year. It's my opinion that Chet Poblish is not only the fastest, but probably the quickest. And I, and I know that people in, in Caddis would, would argue in favor of uh, Denver Williams, who was a great 200-yard sprinter. But where Poblish is so dangerous is in his first two or three steps. He's got that initial quickness uh, off the ball. And he changes gears, George. He got that fourth to fifth gear switch out there. He made that turn up field. He was in fourth gear, and he saw that opening in that alleyway, and it went into fifth gear, and he just zoomed it right in that end zone. That, that was that was exceptional speed. I'm sorry for getting so excited, but you just got to love something like that, folks. Well, it's better than being down 19. Oh, so I guess it. oh man, I just I, when he turned on the Jets, it was just unbelievable to watch. He ran like that. The old man used to run. Yeah, the old man used to be man. pretty good too. And uh, they're gone from a single setback, but they're not going to get much accomplished by throwing four, four yard out patterns. Dave Cornish came up and drilled Eric Howard after a gain of a couple of three. That's the kind of passes we like to see him complete now. And the clock runs. And the clock runs for a three yard gain. Dave Cornish. They're part of that Kirch. secondary. There's the blue stretch up on the line of scrimmage, and Kurt just came from the sideline with the play, and he's trying now to communicate it to his team on the line of scrimmage without the huddle with 7.15 to go. Again, they were going to rush. Set. Back on, McCain has got him. Danny McCain. Danny took him low by the ankle and just held on for dear life and pulled him down. Mike Wilt was involved in the action yes. as well. 42 and 44, and we'll watch the replay right here. When these guys start pinning their ears back, Ty, it can get real ugly. McCain's got one part, and the rest of the, the, rest of the body five. has to go. So here they are, one formation with 6.40 to go. Now a golden opportunity to run time off of the clock, and Chet, please, get away from the ball. Just take possession here. Get out of there. As he was going to try to fair catch it, he couldn't get over to it. He smartly got away from it. They're going to down the ball there on the 29-yard line. With six thirty to go. I tell you, George, a couple good first downs here. Really is going to start putting some nails in the coffin. Well, the Buckeye fans are fired up on the far side of the field as they have seen their club take charge here in the second half, trailing seven to six at halftime. In fact, down seven nothing early in this game, and. Uh, 
Buckeye is taking a timeout, and I think wisely right here for Ronnie yes. Tobish to come out, get everybody settled down, make sure that they're not going to hyperventilate on him, uh, uh, getting overly excited about the prospects of winning a playoff game. You, you've got to maintain your composure. Maintain your composure out there on the football field right now, and the main thing he's telling you, he's going to tell his uh, linemen to stay with their block, keep their hands in, back, two hands on the football because Lake's going to try to be stripping the ball off the ball carriers right now. And this is the time of the game, again, you could see something bust loose for a long game with them trying to go for the ball instead of the tackle. But the, the main thing is our composure out on the football field. I don't think we're going to see the ball thrown in the air very much the rest of the ball game. And it's just now going to be a ground game. It's going to be up to the offensive line down to take the ball down the field and take the time off the clock for us. Two things are imperative in this situation. I've seen so many mistakes made in this, this point. But number one is you've got to tell your center and your quarterback, make sure you get the exchange. I don't care what else happens. Make sure we snap the football and grab the football. And the second thing is you've got to have your running backs almost stick the thing underneath their shirts before they start running with it. I mean, cover that thing like it's it's the most valuable uh, jewel in the world. And stay in bounds. Yes. Here we go. You just cannot run with the ball in one hand here. You, you, you've just got to run time off the clock. And I don't think the opponent is going to be able to score two touchdowns that quick. Here is Poglish, and he has a first down in a hurry. I tell you what, the offensive line on that left-hand side just cleared the way. Bobby Ogden just threw an awesome block over here, along with the lead backs in there, Roush and McLean again, clearing the way for him. Take a look at this, folks. There's Mason Boyce, number 60, out here going after somebody. Mason, out that, yeah, you saw him downfield. That was Corey Benton. I'm sorry. Bobby Ogden, number 64. Sustic, 53. Boyce, 50. Benton, number 60. R.C. Fellows, number 72. This time, uh, the ball carrier is Poblish, and he has tripped up along the line of scrimmage for short yardage. Yes, the, the linebacker broke, uh, broke in through their claim and uh, tripped him up for no gain as we're looking now at second and 10 with 5.45 to go in the game. A couple other guys who deserve mention here who do a nice job blocking when uh, given the opportunity, Barry Roski and Carl Baronic along that interior line of the Buckeye local Panthers. Split setbacks, they have run out of the set a lot and uh, they give it off to Roush, I believe. Yes. Who is content to keep running time off the clock right here. Bring up third down and nine. Don't be surprised, Jordan. We see that ball going to the outside here to Pope and that little dive spin pitch. And don't forget, you can see Wellsville and Catholic Central following WTOV 9 News tonight at 11.30. Power eye right, under five minutes to play. There it is, the play that was called, but it's going to be a loss on the play, which is not all bad. It stayed in bounds, and by the time Blake gets the football, the clock will wind down. We're going to be approaching the four, four minute, minute mark. mark. Yes, definitely. Right now, again, George, we know how important it is. We've seen there's a late timeout to stop the clock with 4.38 to go, and that's that all important center snap. Now, here's an interesting scenario. You're, you're going to be in punt formation. You've had some problems with your punt team uh, this evening. Uh, a couple of the punts have been short. Matthews is a very capable punter, but you've got to make sure you don't get a punt block and have somebody scoop it up. So you, what, what do you tell your punter right here? I, I would presume you tell him whatever you do, don't, don't get, get it blocked. Don't get a block. Don't, you know, uh, you're going to go into your, into your max protection blocking scheme right now. You're not going to worry that much about the coverage. You're going to tell the kids they still got to cover. But their main job right now is to block in your max protection blocking scheme. Tell that punter they're coming at you. If it's a bad snap, remember one step punt, get it off. Don't worry about your normal two to three step punt. Get the ball off and don't get it blocked. And if nothing else, eat the football. Uh, you're still going to put your defense out there, which is just doing a marvelous job right now and, and forcing the other team in uh, a, a very short period of time to well, score twice. Here they come. And Matthews gets it away. Nice punt. And the ball is loose. We got it. Game McCain down there to hit the ball carrier just as he was about to make the catch. And the Panthers come up with it. Look like number 10. Dave, Dave Cornish, I think, might have come up that ball, George. 
Right there is coming loose. Right there comes McCain in to take the hit on him. Well, put him away from look it. at McCain. I mean, he, this guy has just played the game of the year right here. Uh, he, you, you talk about a brilliant play. He was in the deep back's face. When he saw the ball was loose, he yanked him away from it and gave Cornish the opportunity to cover it. Now with 4.13 to go, we got first and 10 now on the 33-yard line. 19-7 Buckeye looking for its first victory ever in the postseason. Flags are down. Delay. And it is a delay against the Panthers. You know, this has been a very well-played game for the most part. There have not been very many penalties. Uh, both teams have committed one here or there. Uh, the one costly penalty for um, some kind of a personal foul here in the second half. But other than that, the Panthers have played almost flawlessly here since intermission, lead 19-7. Okay, now we got to pick up 15 yards instead of 10 yards on these four downs and run off some time. First and 15. And keep in mind that Lake has already used a timeout here. Publish. Take your time now. Right now the offensive lineman should be schooled to get off that ground very slow so the official can get the ball and get it set real quick. 3.45 on a turning clock. Second and 11 from the 34. And barring something insane, with only one timeout remaining, Uniontown Lake, barring something insane, Buckeye Local is looking at a matchup with either Watterson or Independence next week. What's Look at this? this? You've got to be kidding me. McCain on the uh, slot back, what would you call that? The slot back option? <laughs> uh, that's, let's call that the Panther special. Oh boy. They was, I tell you what, Pobe here was really going for the, ju the, the juggler, buddy. Well, it's they've the got a lot. Of deep. Yep, and good defensive play down there by Lake. But I'll tell you what, Pope said he'd try anything to win this football game, and he has pulled some interesting things out of the baggage. <laughs> <laughs> here tonight. <laughs> Unbalanced right, power eye right. Look at this hole! Go, Chesh! Oh, this is ugly for Lake, and it's a first down. I tell you, we came, we came right back with a power eye right with an unbalanced right that we saw Lake do to us in the first half of their touchdown, and that we brought the flip the tight end over with the flanker out to the wide side, and Lake defense did not bump down to it. Look at, we're, we're hunting people to block out there. Well, they overran the play. I mean, they sent everybody, and Poblish is all by himself out there with the exception of one defender who made the tackle, and that's Apsiga. Three minutes to go, George. The coffin is starting to close, bud. Power I right. And McCain, McCain will slash ahead for good yardage. And at this point in time, Lake is trying yeah, to tackle the football instead of the ball carrier. And uh, that's allowing for additional yardage to be piled up. Yes, Danny picked up six yards in that play. We're looking now at second and four from the inside the 10-yard line. If you're joining us late, this is... The terribly partial George Ellis, Ty Fleming, and Bill Edgar, a Bel Air senior who's been so helpful to us here tonight. Like to have seen his own team in action, but rooting for the Ohio Valley representative, the Buckeye Panthers. Nice tackle made there by Ryan Dutton, but a lot of this stuff may be too little too late with 205 and counting. Third down and nine from the 14-yard line. We'll take a look at it right here. We'll just see that big Brian Dutton just blows up through the middle there. And a good thing he did because we had some room to the outside here. Well, regardless of what happens, don't think this Lake team won't be back in the hunt here shortly. I mean, they've just got a great program. And, and everybody knew this was not their best team. But this is not in any way to discredit the performance here by the Buckeye Panthers who have been of championship ilk in this game. A minute and a half to play, and now it is just a matter of running it down. We get a timeout called. Well, it looks like we're going to move on, George, to next week's uh, regional final game with the Panthers, and uh, Lake will have to uh, get themselves into the uh, preparation now with the winter workouts, get themselves ready to come back in the program, and you know that uh, Lake will be back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Any team with uh, the, the tradition, the history, 
you know, this uh, in some people's estimation kind of a rebuilding situation for them. They have some good quality players and uh, they, they will be back. But at the same time, this is a golden opportunity wow. for the Buckeye Panthers. This is the year that, uh, you know, that we've been pointing at. I, I think they really turned the corner this year, Ty. I think until this year, a lot of people uh, questioned whether or not Buckeye could, could compete in the postseason against the heavyweights. You know, they took a thumping from Big Red in 1990, uh, West Branch in 1991. But I just felt if they could go in and be able to play uh, Upper St. Clair at their place early in the season, Here's an Upper St. Clair team that's in the postseason, favored maybe to win the whole WPIAL, won 47 or 48 league games, quad A games in a row up there. Now you're you're playing with some serious company up there in Upper St. Clair, and now here are the Panthers undefeated thus far. Pitch out pitch to Pope. Publish is inside the five yard line. First down with 1.20 to go and Lake is out of, out of time. Out. So now it's just a matter of uh, Buckeye running off these next couple plays here and running out the clock. Nice look there. Chet Kick out by McCain on the outside people. Nice job inside by Kaminsky blocking the tight end there. Again, we've gone to that unbalanced look. They've been real successful with it here in this last series. Two years ago, Panther fans said, what are we going to do without Billy West? Oh, Rouse is in. Touchdown. Mike Roush ices up the cake with under a minute to play. It is 25 to 7. You see the Panther faithful on the far side. Roush, a 5'9", 180 pound senior. And he's in from two yards out. And that will definitely put Buckeye into the state quarterfinals. And keep in mind that there are 120 teams in each class. There are eight remaining. Seuss's kick is up and, and no, no good. good. So it is 25 to seven with 55 seconds showing in this football game. Let's talk, George, about that offensive line because they really have done a job in this half for the Buckeye Panthers out there, number 64. Bobby Ogden, number 53. Jason Sussex, number 50. Mason Boyce, number 60. Corey Benton, and number 72. R.C. Fellows, along with the tight end, Joe Kaminsky. Barry Roski, number 73. Three. Carl Baronic, number 70. 85, and, and, Brian and, 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 Robson. This has just been a brilliant second half. I mean, they came out and outscored a quality football team with a great defensive tradition. Uh, 19 to nothing here in the second half. Uh, as a matter of fact, they have scored 25 unanswered points in this football game uh, after the early score on a 38-yard drive by Uniontown Lake. It has been all Panther football. Panther football. I mean, That's right. Th there have been some breaks. I mean, you, you'll recall late in the first half, they had a chance to go up uh, with another score, and the Panthers uh, did right. manage to get a, a uh, benefit from a clip call. I mean, that was a play that uh, really helped because oh, the clip tremendous. was way away from the ball uh, carrier. And, and uh, you know, there have been a couple breaks along the way. A drop pass down, down here, here. In, in the third quarter. Uh, that, that uh, may, when, maybe earlier in the fourth quarter it was, but in any event, to make a long story short, defensively, this team has risen to the challenge in every way, shape, and form. And Sign they return. Bring the ball back yeah. out to the 34-yard line with 49 seconds to go. Cornish on the stop for the Buckeye Panthers. You know, as well as anybody, Ty, when, when somebody tells you that there are only eight teams in the entire state of Ohio left in your class and you're one of them, puts a smile on your face. Oh, man. I mean, you, you've got to understand how many football programs uh, have been dreaming of this opportunity since August 1 and throughout a long off season, and how precious the opportunities are and how you are one of the chosen few when November rolls around. Yes. And our sack for a sack, we have nine sacks on the evening, many of those uh, to the credit of the Buckeye Panther Panthers. defense, which has been ferocious in its attack of John Kurtz. And that's nine sacks, $450, headed to the Salvation Army, courtesy of our friends at the Kroger Food and Drug Company. Kurtz scrambling out of the pocket, throwing, 
Ball is knocked down in the secondary. Uh, broken up by number 14. Rick Matthews. Extra defensive back back in the secondary for their passing attack coming at us. 20 seconds to go. Oh boy, I tell you what, there's going to be some smiles in Panther country tonight, George. And think of all of the communities that have come together to make what is now Buckeye local. And uh, uh, the celebrating in the Dillonvales and the Smithfields and the Yorkvilles and all of the great traditions up and down the river and all of the communities that now make up what is the Buckeye Local School District. Always have been just a... Make this 10 rich. sacks, kids. Right. No. Oh, he's still loose. Wait a minute. What are they going to call this? Well, well something good's going to happen for the Panthers in any event. Seven seconds to go. And, uh, I'll tell you what, that sure looks like Kenny out there. <laughs> sure, his name's not Jeff. Let's, let's see how many kids. times he gets away. Okay, let's see. We're going to go with, uh, there's one. Let's see, that was Runovich who arrived first on the scene. How he got out of that last mess, I'll never know. Good athletic maneuvering here by the quarterback, John Kurtz. John Houdini Kurtz on that play. Seven seconds to go, and this could be it. Every, everybody deep. Kurtz back. Kurtz throws deep down the middle, incomplete, and where there will be yet one other play. 1.3 Panther folks. Here comes Kurtz over to Kurtz Durbin to get his last call of the ball game. Well, a very flattering comment was made up here by a young man who's a videographer for Uniontown Lake. He said at halftime, he said, this team we're playing tonight is the best team we've played all year. And he was talking about the Buckeye Panthers, and that league that they play in up there is not exactly no, lunch that's meat. Not, that's not a pancake. Massel and Jackson, Massel and Perry. You're talking about uh, some big-time schools, Alliance. You're talking quality football. Len Dawson's alma mater, Alliance High School. Here's a short ball. It's incomplete, and it is over. The Buckeye local Panthers. The monkey's off the bat, George. The Buckeye local Panthers celebrate the first victory in the postseason in the school's history. Your final score, Buckeye 25, Lake 7. WTOV and Fox. What, what a great feeling for the Panthers out there on the football field right now. And Coach Povlich and for the entire communities down there along in the Buckeye uh, territory out there. The Buckeye West, the Buckeye North, and the Buckeye South have been dissolved now. We just got one good Buckeye football team playing out there. And it really just, this is the start of a tradition. Those towns always did have great traditional football. And now Coach Povlich and this Buckeye Panther Club has just taken another step to really put themselves amongst the elite in the state by getting that first victory. And believe me, the monkeys off the back as they celebrate with their helmets up in the air. And they got, they got two days to celebrate. I always told the kids they're going to have Saturday and Sunday to celebrate. Monday we're ready to play some football again. And I got a George, good feeling about this team because I like the maturity of this bunch. For Bill Edgar, Ty Fleming, and our entire WTOV9 team, this is George Kellis saying so long, everybody. Your final score, Buckeye 25, Uniontown Lake 7. WTOV9's Game of the Week featuring...